Professor Tzvi Arad, President of Netanya Academic College, Ms. Betty Ehrenberg, our esteemed co-chair, uh, Mr. Henry Cisneros, our second co-chair and recipient of the honorary degree in the afternoon, friends, colleagues, guests. <clears throat> Sunday, 23rd of September, saw a turtle dove, a pelican, weeds in abundance, the sea being smooth and tranquil, the sailors murmured, saying that it would never, it would never blow to carry them back to Spain. But afterwards, the sea rose without wind, which astonished them. The rising of the sea was favorable to me, as it happened formerly to Moses when he led the Jews out of Egypt. For those who don't, who did not guess yet, this is an excer excerpt from Columbus' log of his first voyage to America in 1492. Andres Bernaldez, a contemporary churchman and historian, writes about the expulsion of the Jews less than two months earlier, as follows. The rabbis strengthened their resolve and made the women and the young people play the pipes and tambourines to cheer the people until they arrived at the ports of the sea. As soon as they glimpsed at the sea, at the port of Cadiz, which is not far away from Palos, from where Columbus sailed to America, they let out loud shouts, men and women, adults and children, beseeching God for mercy, for miracles, that he might open the path, a path for them in the sea, just as he did for Moses and the Israelites when they left Egypt. The fateful summer of 1492 has affected us all to this very day. From a Jewish perspective, the Sephardi refugees would dominate virtually every location and community they settled in the East, changing the complexion of Jewish life in every possible way to this day. A multitude of new Christians fleeing the Spanish and Portuguese inquisitions seeking new life and opportunities made the Iberian colonies their destination. No world history of the 16th to the 18th centuries can be written without understanding their impact on international trade and commerce, Iberian and European intellectual developments, as well as their influence in the widest variety of other areas. And of course, Hispanic demography and culture in the New World is not limited today only to Central and South America, but also to the entire United States, as you certainly notice in Miami. We need, we want, to address present situations and the best way of doing that seems to us to be through a historical prism and by deep and honest soul searching. As we only illustrated above, Jews and Christians in Iberia shared during few generations a common existence which was termed by historians as convivencia. This came to an end during the 14th century. We succeeded, I'm happy to say, in assembling an elite group of leading scholars, thinkers, spiritual leaders, individuals of repute and of influence. Covering the themes of the conference, we will touch upon a wide range of fields like history, anthropology, genealogy, demography, genetics, Jewish-Christian and Latino-Jewish relationships, we sincerely hope that this conference will prove to be an historical one, not only in the annals of our institute and of Netanya Academic College, but also in terms of contribution 
to the discussion regarding the real issues which are at stake today. We want, however, to single out our host, Mr. Michael Dezer. for his outstanding generous contribution and for availing for us the use of a most beautiful venue. We have with us Betty, Ms. Betty Ehrenberg, Executive Director of the World Jewish Congress North America. Shalom, everybody. Welcome. Good morning, Bokerto. Uh, first of all, it is real, a, a real privilege to be here today, and I thank Professor Gross and Professor Arad and Dr. Altman and uh, all the friends, Bobby Gitis, Rabbi Scheinberg, everybody. This issue is terribly important to us. It is uh, at the World Jewish Congress, and I know my fellow uh, representatives from ADL, there's David and B'nai B'rith, I saw uh, Adriana, and um, it's become very important to us on the American Jewish agenda. So uh, thank uh, the Netanyahu Academic College and all the participating organizations for giving us the opportunity for these two Yimei Iyun, or days of in-depth study uh, of Latino Jewish history. This gathering is so important because we see a new development in the Jewish relationship with Spain. Spain, which had been a symbol for Jews of a glorious and then a tragic past is now a symbol of renewal of friendship because Spain is now having a new recognition of its Sephardic heritage. The bilateral relationship between Israel and Spain is a positive one, and I think we should look forward to Spain and look up to Spain to try to play a leading role in Europe and help increase uh, positive attitudes towards Israel and peaceful coexistence among all the peoples. We see very impressive educational and cultural initiatives emanating from Spain, including uh, that of reconciliation with uh, Sfardim who had fled Spain uh, in that time. And we are witnessing improved Spain, uh, improved ties between the Spanish and Jewish communities, and that is uh, very important. Only two years ago, uh, I and my fellow members of the International Jewish Committee on, on Interreligious Consultations, and my friend David Sandmill from ADL is here as part of that, uh, as is World Jewish Congress, B'nai B'rith, AJC, and others, uh, took a trip to Spain uh, and had uh, three days with the Catholic uh, Bishops' Conference. And for the first time, they, with us, visited Rabbi Ben Dahan Synagogue in Madrid. And uh, we had a really what I thought was a breakthrough dialogue. Former President of Spain, Jose Maria Aznar, founded the international organization called Friends of Israel. Former President Felipe Gonzalez headed the Madrid Peace Conference in 1991. And former Foreign Minister Moratinos worked to encourage the peace process. And we have heard in recent years important voices on both sides of the aisle in Spain denouncing hatred of Jews and support for a genuine Middle East peace. So it is very good feeling to be in the company of so many friends in what I think is a very difficult time. Students on campus are returning to school now and in many ways are wondering what kind of atmosphere they are going to encounter. Too many ca campuses are fostering an atmosphere that is uncomfortable for students who love Israel and some are even hostile. In an era when Israel has so much to offer modern society and the developing world, when she has made many overtures for peace and peaceful coexistence, and time and again has proven to be the only reliable Middle East ally that we have, we find ourselves time and again still having to fight the battle against those who wish to defame and destroy that, defame Israel and destroy that relationship. And it is not a battle that's confined to any single area. Years ago, we could worry about Israel and her immediate neighbors. Today, everything has a global reach that can be attained in a matter of seconds via the internet. Everything that happens in all the Middle East countries has an effect. 
what happens in Europe has an impact, what, happen, what develops in Russia and the former Soviet Union has an impact on all of this. So the challenges today are really quite overwhelming, which is why today our coming together as allies with a shared history and shared values is so significant. These shared values include striving for education for all our children so they can find their way to gainful employment and successful careers in every field. They include the importance of faiths in our, our faiths in our lives and the spiritual guidance and communal sustenance that we derive from them. We share concerns about the needs to eradicate poverty and ensure economic empowerment of future generations. Most important, we stand shoulder to shoulder against racism and discrimination, the denigration of minorities, against anti-Semitism and bigotry, and against anti-Hispanic rhetoric and xenophobia no matter where it comes from. This deeply disturbing phenomenon is all too apparent still, despite the strides that have been made by the Latino American community and their myriad contributions to the political, cultural, and economic leadership here in the United States. So it is indeed very good when brothers and sisters can gather together, as the psalmist says, and can strengthen each other. Both of our communities have common interests in the making of foreign policy in the world, and in the Western Hemisphere in particular, that will ensure the security of the United States and Latin America. We are both stakeholders in the fight against terrorism and the spread of the influences that fund and foster terrorism around the world, including in Latin America, in an effort to undermine the safety and stability of our hemisphere. We have yet to see justice done for the victims of the bombings in Argentina in 1992 at the Israeli embassy, and in 1994 when the Amian Daya, the Jewish communal bodies, were devastated and continue to seek that justice. We have watched terrorism spread all over the globe. So this is in the interest of not only the Jewish community, not only of Israel, but in the interests of everyone. Latinos and Jews, have deep connections to the ancestral lands from which our parents and grandparents came. This conference will explore where our two identities and cultures intersect and connect. A long history of Iberian Jewish heritage and proud Sephardic traditions highlight our commonalities and affinities and enables us to continue to strengthen our alliances in the Latino American and Jewish American communities. This empowers us both in our quest to achieve a peaceful and productive future for our children and our country. And we are fortunate in the United States that we have leaders in the Latino American community, in both parties in Congress, in government, in many other fields, who will continue to provide that leadership and contribute their wisdom. This week, we will read the portion in the Torah, Parshat Shavua, called Shoftim, Judges, in the book of Deuteronomy, as we continue reading to the last of the cycle, as we get to Yom Tov, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom Kippur, and then Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. In it, the children of Israel are commanded to set up a proper judicial system so that a just society can be maintained and the laws that Moses transmitted to them from Sinai can be followed. We are told in this portion, tzedek tzedek tirdof, justice, justice shall thou pursue, for in only in this way can the will of God be done. We also will read in the Haftarah, chapter 52 in Isaiah, Yeshayahu, which is one of the chapters which the prophet comforts Jerusalem after its terrible destruction. And he says, Uri, uri, livshi uzeich tziyom, put on, livshi bigdech tifartech, Yerushalayim ir hakodesh. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion, put on thy beautiful garments, Jerusalem, the holy city. From this juxtaposition, we learn that when we pursue justice and have a just society, Jerusalem gains strength and beauty and rejoices. So we truly rejoice at being together at this momentous time. The spiritual values that we all hold dear strengthen us and compel us to work together to seek justice and combat hatred. May we continue to be dynamic agents for a bright future for our communities, our children, our country, and the world. Thank you. <laughs>